Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Atlanta Business Radio, spotlighting the city's best businesses and the people who lead them. Welcome to this very special edition of Atlanta Business Radio. We're actually broadcasting live for ATDC Radio down here at ATDC, catching up with some old friends, making some new ones. Uh, this is going to be a fantastic segment, Lee. Please join me in welcoming to the program CEO with Higher Ground, Miss Chloe Guidry Reed. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Stone. I appreciate that introduction. Well, before we get too far into things, Chloe, tell us about Higher Ground. How are you serving folks? Sure. So Higher Ground is essentially a supplier CRM. So we help large enterprise organizations better manage their existing suppliers while also helping them strategically source diverse suppliers to help with their supplier diversity needs. Now, how are they um, kind of dealing with their suppliers now if they don't work with you? Well, what you'd find is a lot of them are using very traditional systems like Excel. um, Really? Yeah. Just giant spreadsheets? Just giant spreadsheets (laughs) because while they potentially could use other CRMs, usually they're designed for the sales teams within those organizations Mm -hmm. and not specifically designed for procurement teams or for supply chain or for supplier diversity teams. So it needs some customization. And as you know, um, it can be expensive. Right. It can be very expensive. So now when you work with an organization, um, is this something that they're going to have to disrupt what they're doing now and then add this on or this kind of bolts onto their existing infrastructure? It bolts onto their existing infrastructure. So the way that we've built our platform through REST API, it can integrate with any ERP system that they're existing Mm -hmm. using or any AP system that they have. Um, I don't think it's going to be a disruption other than sort of a mind shift of using Excel or collecting cards versus right. now putting it into a an actual transparent system so that you can see it across your organization. And then when you're looking at it, um, how are you seeing it differently than like just kind of a long list of names and the spreadsheet would give yeah, you? Yeah. So they're able to manage it. So they're able to see everything that's happening with their suppliers in real time. So they can monitor risk. So when you look at credit risk, reputational risk, anything in real time, they can see that. But then they can also allow their suppliers to update their information right in the system. So the suppliers also get an invitation, you know, let's say, for example, it's a SunTrust or a Home Depot. Mm -hmm. Once they upload all their suppliers, they get an invitation to now upload your information, verify that it's correct so that they don't have to continually manually go after all of this information, because as you know, I mean, things change, people change, um, your point of contact changes and it just, it's a central database that, that allows them to just keep all of that record there. So now, um, how does the kind of diversity and inclusion part of this work? So how does this help me in that area? Yeah. So basically what we've done is aggregated a lot of millennial entrepreneurs, diverse suppliers, if you will. And so companies are really, really struggling to figure out how do we find new suppliers? How do we get them into our pipeline? How do we educate them around what, you know, what it is that we have available from a procurement standpoint and also how to do business with us? So this allows them to do all of that. You know, we're holding a webinar. We are, um, we have these procurement opportunities available. They can post it on our platform, but they can also just search. They can do a, a search. They can do an export. They can do whatever they need. Um, and then they can search by certifications as well. So now this is an area for a large organization that they kind of at least give lip service to that they want to have more diversity and sure. inclusion and want to sure. you know invite other people. And so this gives them a tool to actually kind of deliver on that promise. Right, exactly. To track and measure and to see what their spend is and see who they're spending it with, mm-hmm. whether it be majority veterans or majority LGBTQ owned or minority owned business or women owned business. So it allows them to see all of that. And then, uh, so how did this idea come about? Well, I have worked in risk management consulting for the last, oh, gosh, I hate, I'm giving away my age now, but 20 years. Wow. Um, and so at my previous employer, one of the main things that I did was more risk management, risk transfer, and helping them on the supply chain side. Mm-hmm. So a lot of conversations just led to, um, do you guys consult on supplier diversity? And at the time, I really didn't know very much about it. 
but I became obsessed with it mm-hmm. um, because I felt like it was this hidden thing. And, and why don't I know about this? You know? Um, and I think that I also became obsessed with it because I, I f- fall into two of those groups. I'm a minority and I'm also a woman. So mm-hmm. when I was looking at just the incredible opportunity and the lack of knowledge around it, particularly for next generation entrepreneurs, I just found that there was a huge, huge opportunity um, to make it easier, to make it more transparent and to make it easier for younger generations in terms of suppliers to, to adopt. So making a central system that already integrates with a lot of the technologies that they're already using. So now walk me through how that kind of millennial minority owned company kind of Mm -hmm. plugs into this ecosystem to get the most out of it. Yeah. So basically what we do, um, our, the supplier side of our platform will be launching in February. Right now we are just available to enterprise organizations. So Soon we'll be sending out a huge announcement that they can get plugged in and they just sign up on the site and they will get plugged right into the platform. So then they become kind of a choice for these enterprise organizations. They become a choice. Exactly. And then they can be sorted in the same kind of buckets that the enterprise is sorting. Exactly. So that they can be found. They can be found and they'll have certain tags. We use a little bit of AI. So once an enterprise organization gets into the platform and does some searching, but doesn't, you know, take it to that next step in terms of you know, procuring an opportunity right. with them. The next time they log into the platform through the AI, they'll be able to see new suppliers that maybe fit that criteria or that resource. Now, in some cases, enterprises have to kind of bless the company before they can do work with them. They Absolutely. have to kind of vet them and say, okay, vet these them. people exactly. pass this, you know, 14 point checklist exactly. that in order to do business with us. Sure. Does it tell the millennial company uh, you're going to need to pass these 14 points if you want to work with ABC company. That's what the risk scoring algorithm does. Mm-hmm. So it allows it's fully transparent. So it allows both sides of the marketplace to see where they are on the risk spectrum. So credit risk, financial risk, reputational risk, as I was speaking about earlier. So they can see what these 14 or 15 points, we have 15 points. Right. And so they can see where they are and why, and they can put notes around. So our credit risk score is a little low because we're cash flow positive. We are not getting credit. So right. th- those are things that they can put under their risk score so that organizations can see, okay, this is why their score is low. So now from your standpoint as the platform, are you doing some uh, activity to educate kind of these smaller firms, these um, kind of minority firms, the ones that are trying to get into the enterprise in kind of tips and tricks to help them be more attractive and to make sure they check all the boxes as well as help the enterprise level kind of be aware of, okay, if you want to deal with these firms, this might help you kind right. of more effectively. Yeah. And so we're really focused on the enterprise side right now. So right. we're, we're helping them with understanding and how to, how to roll out a supplier diversity program, how to reach this some of them generation. don't have it. Or? Some of them don't have it. Really? They yeah. talk a lot about it. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, I think certain companies have it um, and they're, they're doing it, but then there are certain companies who are evolving and may not, have a supplier diversity program. They understand it, but it's in its infancy. So right. maybe like a year, or 18 months. So did yeah. that surprise you? Um, no. So, you know, for an example, like you could look at like an Airbnb that hasn't been around very long, mm-hmm. but you know, now that they're getting, you know, they're obviously huge now and global. So, but they're a young company. So now supplier diversity is something that may be something of importance to them, but they may not have right. as mature of a program. That Even a though Home they've Devo been very successful. Coke. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So now um, what type of enterprise organizations are you targeting? Are they targeting them that here, here in Atlanta or you're beyond that right now? Like what stage of growth are you at? Yeah. So there's a couple of companies that we're talking to here in Atlanta, but um, we are actually casting a wide net. Um, so several of our clients are not in the Atlanta marketplace. That is something that we are looking to, to grow is our presence here in Atlanta and get in front of more companies here in Atlanta. And then when you're having these initial conversations, who, who in the company do you normally uh, reach out to? Right. So t- it depends on, you know, cause every organization is different, but typically we either reach out to procurement. Sometimes it can be innovation depending um, because they are the ones that kind of champion for startups and working with startups. Um, it can be supplier diversity, um, it can be someone in supply chain. So it, it's, it's, it just depends on how their organization is, is set up. 
and then uh, this higher ground is funded by the enterprise, and the, or the suppliers pay as well. There, there is a small fee for the suppliers, um, a monthly recurring fee to be listed on the platform, and the organizations, the actual enterprises, are the ones that pay right now to license so those the are your, software. Kind of the the clients who you're uh, right. addressing, right? Exactly. And then the ideal one, you haven't kind of nailed that down, or you're still kind of honing. Okay, we work best with Fortune 100 and like, do you have that figured out? Yeah, I mean, we work best with like Fortune 500 to Fortune 1000. Mm -hmm. So they just seem to have a a little less red tape and and no offense to the Fortune 100 Mm -hmm. to Fortune 500. Um, They have their infrastructures in place for a reason. Um, but I, I find that the Fortune 500 to Fortune 1000 just typically seem to be a little bit more open, open to right. working with startups mm-hmm. and a little bit um, more open in general to just new technology. Now, um, tell us about your relationship with the ATDC. Why was it important for you to, to be part of this ecosystem? Well, I actually, and apparently I'm one of the rare people who have went through Educate, so the Educate program, (laughs) and all the way through that, graduated through Educate, and then moved into Signature. So I find that the community here is very, very helpful, particularly for B2B businesses. Mm -hmm. Um, They've got great mentors here, they've got great great resources here, and they've got great relationships. And so far, it's just been um, a great experience. I'm glad that I was able to get in. Now, uh, what was your kind of, um, what brought you to the Educate like, how'd you hear about it? What, how'd you even know it existed? You know, I heard about it from um, someone, another tech founder that connected me, um, that someone connected us. And she said, you know, have you heard of ATDC? That might be a good place for you to start. And, and what level, like what stage were you at? Prior I, to- I was at idea stage then. So you were just had an idea. Yes. And you were just kind of socializing amongst the people you knew. Yes. Socializing it and really trying to figure out what other tools are out there because I was doing tons of research online, but I'm like, couldn't come up with stuff. Surely there's, you know, so you thought for sure there was something, somebody that was addressing. Exactly. Exactly. Cause it's rare, right? That there's nothing. Right. Um, and there is a couple of things, so don't get me wrong, but in terms of just what I'm used to using, Mm -hmm. like I just didn't see anything. Um, And so when I was socializing it, someone said, hey, you know, this is a great place. They, you know, you can go through the educate program. They show you really a process around how you do customer discovery and how you ask the right questions and how you get in front of the right people that would be your potential customers once you go live. Right. So then uh, I'm sure once you saw the price tag on that, you were like, hey, I think I'll Give this a go, right? Yes. It was pretty attractive the way they have it set up, right? Yeah. You know, it wasn't really the <laughs> price tag per se. Um, I'm more about value. Right. So when I came to the first one, I was like, this was great. Right. There's and a lot of information. There's a lot of information. Right. And then I just started carving out the time on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Right. It's a more of a it. time that's the hard, yep. that's the higher price to pay. That is, that is. And, um, it was, it was great. I mean, Bill Hogan has this way of, um, pressing you more and more and more to go deeper and deeper mm-hmm. with the questions that you're asking. So it was very, very, very helpful for me. And then, so you went through the whole process. I did. So that was a commitment of time and, it was. and energy. It was. It but, was. But uh, at the end, did your idea change dramatically or were you pretty much in the same area that no, where you started? I, I don't know that it, the idea changed, but I knew that it needed to be in order for our MVP to be marketable mm-hmm. so that actually people would buy it, that it needed to have a little bit more functionality that we hadn't initially scoped. And mm-hmm. so um, that was really helpful. I don't think that I would have been able to get that had I not gone through customer Like if you discovery. were just on, at your, yeah. your own on your own thinking, on my own thinking. Right. And then people often just to start to build and right. um, you're building in a vacuum. Right. So, um, yeah, it was very, very helpful. Now, what about the team? Did you already have a team in place? I didn't. I did not. So um, it was just you with an was, idea? It was just me wow. with an idea. And so that was part of the reason why I was talking to people as well. And so um, I got connected to another gentleman who helped me with building it from the beginning. 
Um, and then when I got here, I got connected to a couple of other individuals who had just had an exit. So these were like strangers? They were completely strangers. And, and then you um, were able to build kind of partners? Partners and wow. rapport. And um, we built our product. And Had you ever done a startup great. like this before in any? Not a startup like this. No, I have not. Not technology at all. So, so then you uh, adding team members and all this was kind of first time? It was, it was the first time, but, um, it, I don't know. I do, I'm a researcher to the core. Um, right. I also have my MBA. So I just kind of leaned on that and then asked people to help, mm-hmm. you know, you know, being vulnerable. I think people is particularly in Atlanta. I, I love that about Atlanta is when you ask for help, people are willing to help right. you. So that's a, that's a great thing about the, being uh, here. The sense of collaboration yeah. is just amazing. It is, especially yeah. in the tech community. So right. I appreciate that. And then uh, once you got plugged in, you went through the educate, uh, then more and more resources probably became available to yes, you, right? Yes, they did. And, you know, one thing I will say is that people often have different experiences, but you got to, you have to be proactive. So right. You can't just sit there and wait for the just, phone ring. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, well, you know, all this is going to come right. to me. You have to ask people right. and you have to be proactive about what you want and, and, and reaching out. Right. And then for you in the growth of the company, how did you get your first clients? Did they ATDC help in that area? Or was that your existing uh, contacts that helped you get the first kind of people yeah, to try it? Yeah. So before I started Higher Ground, I was in enterprise sales. So, so you already had contacts. I had some contacts. And if I don't know how to do anything else, I know how to sell. So, <laughs> so, so yeah. So that um, was very, very helpful. That right. So set. that's a great Yes. Uh, kind of uh, quality for a CEO to oh, be able to right, right. Kind of tap you, into that network. You've got to then, tap into it. and But also, I mean, you're selling all the time. You're selling right. to investors. I'm selling to my team members when I'm recruiting them, right. selling to customers. So you've got to be able to sell and really understand what your value proposition is. Now, are you self-funded or do you have some funding now? We are self-funded. Oh, yes. So this yes. is really yes. exciting time. It's very exciting. <laughs> right, so you're looking for funding? We are. We are looking for funding. We're kicking off our fundraising round this year, um, a seed round. So, yeah. We, and then ATDC, some- I'm sure, helped in that area because if you've never done this before, it's good to hang out with some people who have. It is. It is. I got connected to Brad. He's amazing. He will get on the phone with you at a moment's notice. He will go through your decks with you. So he's mm-hmm. over investor relations. Um, and he actually... Um, put me in front of the angel lounge. And so I met several in- angel investors there and um, one of the managing directors of a, a huge VC firm here. So um, we're continuing along some of those conversations that I had back then. So now what's your dream of dreams? How does the story end? Oh my goodness. You know, I've had this question um, several times and I'm okay with saying, I don't know just yet because mm-hmm. it allows me to be open to possibilities. Um, I'd love to say, you know, we'll have a great exit in five years, but, you know, we could find another company that's very similar or has a technology that we want and we acquire it. Right. We could find another one and we re- acquire it and, and we can continue to grow this business. Um, and I want to be flexible in my own mind. <laughs> so now uh, diversity is important to you. Yes, it is. And then where do you see the opportunities in terms of the serving other diverse firms? Like, so forget about the monetary and the business side of this, but just kind of the impact on community and then just lifting up people. Yeah. I mean, it's the, it's economic development at its core. Mm -hmm. So my undergrad degree is in economics. So when everyone has equal opportunity and there's equity and it's a a level playing field, we all do better. So Mm -hmm. when people say, you know, I don't necessarily care about diversity, it means you don't necessarily care about the community that you're in or the state that you're in. So there's a lot that, that goes into allowing people to participate equally in, in various procurement opportunities. So when people get contracts, their payroll goes up, their income goes up. They're able to, I mean, when you talk about food insecurities and all these various things that affect certain communities, that all shifts. So, um, at the core, entrepreneurship, I think is, is a great way for cities and states and our nation to get around economic development. Now, do you see this as kind of a, an opportunity for these smaller, diverse firms 
to really penetrate these enterprise level, to aim high mm-hmm. to these enterprise level organizations that maybe that it's not on their radar. They don't think they're large enough to work with them. Yeah. Like uh, to me, there seems to be a lot of opportunity to just get them to dream bigger right. and to show them a path maybe to get there that they don't really see, see at this point. Right. Yeah. There's definitely that opportunity. Um, but also it's just, sometimes it's even the access, right? It's like they're already dreaming big, but they may not have anyone in their network that, that, mm-hmm. that can connect them. They may not know about certification. Um, they may not know about these certifying agencies who also help you with getting certified and then connecting you to corporations. So there's so much education that needs to happen, I think. So, yes. And then uh, is that going to be part of the overall mission of your organization to kind of work both sides of this? Yes, definitely. Just to kind of bridge this gap um, mm-hmm. from one generation to the next. And then for you, what's been the most rewarding part of the journey so far? Oh. Uh, just seeing our progress. That's been the most rewarding part. Um, it's seeing our progress from a year ago is just been tremendously rewarding and seeing the impact, you know, when hearing them, Hey, yes, this is so much better. And now I am able to see what, you know, my team in New York, what suppliers they're using. And if we're thinking of using them here, I can see the nodes and just the feedback has been really, really rewarding people using it. So now do you have any kind of use studies, case studies where you have, okay, before higher ground, we had this kind of result. And now that we have higher ground in place, we've had this plus. We are actually working on some case studies right now so that we can see, you know, where were you, you know, from a cost perspective, where were you in terms of visibility Mm -hmm. and where are you now, now that you're utilizing the higher ground software? So everything that you've done so far has been encouraging and looks positive. Yes. Yes. So far. Cool. So now what do you need more of today? Um, We'd love to obviously get more customers. You know, Mm -hmm. obviously we'd love to meet with some companies here in the Atlanta marketplace. I think it's a great opportunity um, for for Atlanta. I Mm -hmm. think it's a good story for Atlanta. Um, And it's a huge need that a lot of companies have. Um, So you need enterprise level companies to have conversations with so you can explain the value proposition? Absolutely. Absolutely. Good stuff. So if somebody went to learn more right now, where should they go? They should go to higherground.io or they can email me directly at Chloe, C-L-O-E, at higher, H-I-R-E, ground. I'm sure everyone can spell that. Yes. Dot I-O. Good stuff. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story today. Thank you. I appreciate you guys allowing me to be on. This has been great. All right. This is Lee Cantor for Stone Pit, and we will see you all next time on ATDC Radio. 